There was a time not that long ago when posting comments on internet forums or chat rooms was seen as something only computer geeks or people living in their mother's basements did. But beginning around 2003 with the creation of MySpace, this kind of activity started becoming mainstream and would soon take over most aspects of people's lives. MySpace became a thing of the past as people moved over to Facebook and then Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat came on the scene. Today, most people feel that they need to have social media accounts, not just to communicate with their friends, but to share their views and opinions with the world, hoping to get some likes, retweets, and followers. Once these social media tech companies included trending lists and hashtags, countless people began feeding the machine constantly, hoping to get noticed for a witty joke or a controversial comment about what's going on. The trending boxes would start compiling lists about the most talked about topics, giving people an insight into what were supposedly the things being posted about the most, and most people stopped going to websites directly, which were often bookmarked in their browsers as a sort of favorites list, and instead started following the accounts of people, businesses, television shows, etc. on social media. This made companies like Facebook, and Twitter, the middlemen, which now stand in between people and the websites that they used to visit directly. Because of the simplicity of aggregating so many different websites into a single feed, these new middlemen have left people vulnerable, of course, to an array of censorship and manipulation. Most people never considered the complexities and dangerous precedents that have been set by relying on a handful of mega corporations for the distribution of information or the risk risks of allowing themselves to become vulnerable to the ambiguous agenda-driven terms of service, which dictate what is supposedly hate speech or harassment. And the big tech companies changed so rapidly that in just a few years, Twitter went from a website where people posted tweets, 140 character statements is what they started off at, to a place to watch live football games. In 2016, they signed a deal with the NFL to live stream games, and over 2 million people began watching them that way. Even Amazon.com, once only a bookstore, now produces original television series and films through Amazon Studios. Jeff Bezos is attending the Golden Globes and the Oscars for producing films and television shows like Manchester by the Sea and Transparent, about a transgender parent, get it? Transparent. Netflix also evolved from just a streaming service to producing original content. YouTube is producing original shows now, and both Facebook and Apple jumped into the content producing business as well. Because of all this, a record number of people have canceled and continue to cancel their cable subscriptions. These are the people called cord cutters. And with Netflix and Hulu and other streaming services offering on-demand streams of shows from popular television networks and Disney and HBO and Discovery Channel and others having their own streaming apps, more and more people are abandoning traditional television. Things have gotten so strange in our modern media world that even Instagram fact checks users' posts, an app designed for sharing photos, because sometimes the creators of new technology can't imagine how people will use it in ways that it wasn't intended for, and people have been able to turn their Instagram accounts into powerful information warfare feeds simply by posting memes instead of selfies. Instagram also bans certain hashtags, trying to suppress information, not to mention certain memes are deemed a violation of their terms of service, like this one Instagram censored from my account showing the Scooby-Doo team unveiling the real culprit behind the Jesse Smollett attack. They said this violated their harassment and bullying policy. <laughs> and this one, a nice white family with the Caption, white people, the only race you can legally discriminate against. That was hate speech, they said, so they took it down when it was clearly a meme designed to expose discrimination against white people. But just standing up for white people these days and pointing out systemic anti-whiteism is deemed racist. So now memes get dumped down the memory hole. Meanwhile, rappers like 50 Cent, Soldier Boy, and others have posted death threats on their Instagram accounts, but they don't get suspended. Barack Obama appeared on the national stage at the same time social media was rapidly integrating into our lives, and having a Facebook page was becoming almost as standard as having a cell phone. His inner circle of political operatives saw 
uh, the communication landscape was changing, and they jumped on it immediately. Obama was seen as the first social media president and was the first president to have a Facebook page and a Twitter account. The White House would later get its own YouTube channel, and since people are no longer limited to getting their information from the major news networks, and our society rapidly moved away from newspapers and magazines to online websites, blogs, and social media pages, not only did these new media monopolies begin manipulating the flow of information that users are posting and viewing, but cunning individuals within the government looked for opportunities to manipulate users of this new technology as well. An executive in the Obama administration recommended that the government pay online trolls to flood the comments sections on websites and videos in attempts to discredit certain posts they deemed conspiracy theories or from supposed extremists. Cass Sunstein, who headed up the White House Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs for Obama, wrote that such a plan will, quote, undermine the crippled epistemology of believers by planting doubts about the theories and stylized facts that circulate within such groups, thereby introducing beneficial cognitive diversity. A few years earlier, a military intelligence officer and defense analyst drew up a white paper discussing the growing popularity of blogs and independent news websites and explored the possibility of incorporating blogs and blogging into military strategy, primarily as a tool for influence. The paper Blogs and Military Information Strategy also floated the idea of hiring bloggers to attack people and promote certain causes. It also suggested the government hack popular blogs and make subtle changes in articles, not just to spread propaganda, but to discredit the writers. These tactics were proposed before the social media era, which took the information age to a whole new level of user interactions through internet comments as people began to rely on these websites and apps to communicate with their friends, family, and the world at large. An investigation into the official Obamacare Facebook page in 2014 found that the majority of the over 200,000 comments were from a small handful of users who were most likely paid shills to give the false impression that everyone loved the new law. Barack Obama's nonprofit group, Organizing for Action, declined to comment if they were paying people to post, but it's clear from the extraordinary number of posts from the same few accounts that this was an organized online campaign. The government actually paid WebMD, the popular health and medical website, $14 million to promote Obamacare. Those payments weren't even kept a secret and were listed in the budget of the Department of Health and Human Services. A private foundation called the California Endowment even paid $500,000 to television networks to incorporate pro-Obamacare plot lines into TV sitcoms and other shows. All of this makes for a fascinating and complex media landscape, which is difficult to navigate without getting lost in an endless maze of hyperlinks and millions of people and countless companies and organizations simultaneously hoping to be heard, followed, and believed. I'm Mark Dice, media analyst. I got my bachelor's degree in communication from California State University. And if you like more of my serious monologues like this about the brave new world that we're living in, then you'll love reading my books. So order the true story of fake news, how mainstream media manipulates millions in paperback from amazon.com or download the book from Kindle iBooks, Nook or Google Play. My books are a lot more serious and in-depth and hardcore than my videos, which I have to tone down a bit for obvious reasons. So head on over to amazon.com or click the link in the description below and check them out.